Hey, welcome back to the Crypto in Real Life um, podcast. This is podcast number six, and it's the week of April 24th. And we're just going to go over some things that we found interesting that happened this week, some things that we discovered, and we're going to talk through that. Um, so, Clint, you pointed out this article to me, um, some, some news on Fidelity, that they've created their own metaverse. Is that right? Yeah, that's my understanding of it. They... I shouldn't say a, met, a metaverse, but like their own little thing in the metaverse. Yeah, their coordinates within the mm-hmm. metaverse. Yeah, did you notice that? Did you notice the coordinates thing? I thought that was kind of weird. I did notice that. Yeah, it. I saw it on LinkedIn, and they. It was just like a an advertisement kind of thing, where they were saying we've launched a new. Uh, uh, what they call it? Uh, yeah, uh, D. D I forget the name of it, but it was like a fidelity verse or whatever. Right. And it's so corny name, I'm sure. Yeah. And Which I have the to coordinates. S- yeah. And I thought it, it's on its decentraland, which is a decentralized, um, um, like it's a decentralized metaverse platform. So meta is trying to do, you know, the face, Facebook, whatever is confusing. Meta, the company is trying to do, a more centralized platform and Decentraland is doing a decentralized platform, but it sounds like they created it on Decentraland, which is kind of interesting because it's not, you know, a big name company. I've never even heard of, heard of them before. So I'm, I'm guessing they did it through there. Like, cause it's like, is it free? I'm assuming. Yeah. It's not actually, I shouldn't say it's a company. It's just like a free platform that you can make, um, make stuff on buy you buy land and stuff and make your thing so i'm assuming they went through and and did that process um it 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 looked very let's just watch the video of it really quick and then we can come back to this okay at fidelity we're all about engaging and informing a new generation of investors and it's taking us to some exciting places introducing the fidelity stack only in decentraland It's not our first metaverse rodeo, but we are the first brokerage firm to have an immersive educational metaverse experience. The Fidelity stack is gamified, interactive, and educational, where you can learn about the metaverse, investing basics, and our new Fidelity metaverse ETF. So drop in, cut loose, and share your thoughts. We're evolving right along with Web3 to continue driving innovative financial experiences. See you in the metaverse. Okay, so what I get from that, it looks very, um, I saw the little coordinates at the end. It looks very, um, to me, like the second life almost. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, it's, it's almost like a social thing. Yeah, and I, I, it's, I think the reason why people are pushing for it now is that with the VR headsets, it can actually be immersive. And, um, I think sort of like when the internet first came out, everybody was a big rush to create websites, you know, to get your domain in and create your website and have an internet presence. Um, and also there's platforms built on top of the internet, like Facebook, Instagram, and all these different platforms, YouTube. And there was also a rush to create your own social media platform too. On top of that, I think this is just the next step next thing you have to build on they're probably going to make one within the facebook platform they'll probably make one within the whatever the microsoft platform turns out to be and so on it's like another um extension of the internet you know what i mean yeah yeah i think it's it's a more interactive version of it do i think people who have headsets are actually going to look at that i really don't think so not very many but the only people i could see actually looking at that right now are people who are really into it um, I don't think I mean, it's mass adoption at this point by any means. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah, you know, like what? I guess like like the fidelity one. It's a way to get information, or, or I don't know. Maybe it's just like an ad. What do you think? 
I think it's a way to, well, I think it's partly an advertisement. Like, look what we're doing. We're cool. There's definitely that. That's the same thing with, like people. Back in the late 90s, though, I'm tr- I, you have to compare it to the late 90s and, or, and mid-90s when the internet was first coming out. Everybody, there was a big rush to make websites, I remember. And I thought, like, who's looking at this website? Do you remember thinking that? Like, who's actually looking at this stuff? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know if you actually thought that. You might have been too young. But I remember thinking that. Like, do people actually look at these websites? It and, felt like it was out in, in the void. Right. But there was a small community of, you know, enthusiasts and people who were into it that did check out the websites and thought it was important. AOL chat rooms was another big thing. That was the first popular version of it. And I think that's sort of like the, the Facebook's Horizon Worlds and the Decentralized Land type thing. The first iteration of it's kind of corny and not the greatest, but over time, I'm sure their little fidelity land will probably get better over time. They'll keep developing it, just like their websites yeah. get better. I mean, I think like the end vision in all this is like it, it would become like the whole metaverse would just become like a VR world. VR world. And, you can hop and in all between these them. companies, yeah, you can just hop in between them, and it's easy to use. And if you're wanting to learn about something in an interactive way, that's the way you would do it. Right. I mean, it's just like you just hop, like you hop to a website, hop to different websites. It's the same thing. You'll hop to this Fidelity website or world and interact with it, and that's how you can interact with it. And it's a different way to do it. I think it's going to take some time for people to really take it seriously, though. Um and actually do it but it could be really useful what i imagine is fidelity could actually have full-time employees in this decentraland to answer questions in 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 person which is much more helpful than just some chat bot or the um phone that's true that is a good good use for it in the i mean but right now it wouldn't make sense to do that because there's not enough adoption but once there's more adoption you you would have a lot more presence and feeling of being there and I think it's this is what Second Life wanted to accomplish, but they were trying to do it on one platform, and it was too old and way too soon. Although I'm sure Second Life's going to adopt some of these things, just to it'll probably be another platform people use. But it's it's almost like built on too old a technology. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. And I don't think it would really work, but people, I'm sure there's people but, who always use it. But but the current inter- iteration of Metaverse, or at least how companies are implementing their stuff it's it, it i think we said this last week it looks just like second life it's it's really weird well it's be, it looks like it but it honestly that in particular looked better than i don't know if you've ever actually played second life or you, you did it it's yeah it that looked better bad. than second life it was pretty bad but but i mean it's it just has that feel to it i don't know mm-hmm. well it's but you also got to remember you're not sitting there playing on on your desktop it's not 2d you're you're walking around with your virtual that's a good point so it's more that's why i think it'd be useful if you could see other people like it it, it, it's supposed to just be adding more dimensions to the internet space so if you could walk around it see other people walking around it it would just make visiting fidelity more interesting yeah yeah the only thing that's kind of weird that i just thought about that i wonder if this will actually be an issue in the future is individuals who are assholes who will go to say fidelity and act like a total belligerent jerk to people i wonder how that will work how, how they'll be able to police that i'm sure like each company would have like moderators or something yeah <laughs> the security officers of the metaverse yeah basically you kind you do i used to kind of make fun of people who did that but you actually do need that especially with all the spots out there these days well, I bet like the metaverse isn't really going to be anonymous. I I, I imagine it's going to be very like uh, like your personal like it's going to be connected to like your Facebook and your Google and all that. And so I feel like a lot of people are going to be like who they are. Well, Meta is already pushing for you not to have to connect your Facebook to the Meta platform because that was a big. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. You can do that. I think personally because we've already seen the internet. 
I think you'll have your personal account and you'll have accounts that represent a company or represent an idea or represent something totally different. I think they'll be both. Yeah, you could yeah, represent right. yourself, or you could represent this uh, this entity, or whatever you're doing. Do you know what I mean? I just imagine, like, I don't know. I feel like people, like having like a, anonymous people on there. Um, I could see companies not wanting that. I, I don't. I don't well, know. it's the same thing as when people go to their web, visit their website for general information. They're not giving all their names and details to it right away to find out general, general information. Now, I think eventually there will actually be, this will be, there will be like sit downs with, with advisors and stuff in the metaverse. I think that could be a potential selling point to give it more presence. So yeah, instead of doing stuff over the phone or having to travel somewhere that may be far away or something, there could be pe individuals in the metaverse, you know, sitting down with people to get make it have a better feel to it instead of just a Zoom call or whatever. Right, right. And it may not yep. be. It may not be. I don't think it'll look like that. I think it'll look a lot better, and it might actually be more of an augmented reality thing that takes off better. But I think they're just trying to push these new technologies. Because I remember a lot of the websites when they first came out were really goofy and. And almost like, I remember, they almost had overly animated things that happened. You know what I'm talking about? And then it's like, it was just yeah. a bunch of bloat. And it, it wasn't actually what the internet was going to be. But they were just trying to make it cool. You remember those websites it, that were made like crap that it said like, pew, 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 and all these different things. Oh, yeah. It was just like a bunch of GIFs. <laughs> Some websites were so bad back in the day. I don't know. It I think seems like everybody's just trying to stake their claim right now. Right, I, th I think it's just a it's just an early thing. I would never use it right now, but it's interesting that people are doing it, and it kind of lends credence to what Meta is trying to do. And because they see, I think they see how important it is. It also shows like like Napa getting into it, just random random companies doing it. Companies you wouldn't yeah. think of as tech companies. I think it's going to be all companies. Because I remember when Facebook first came out, it was kind of weird people making Facebook profiles for their businesses. But that turned into everybody doing it, and um, same. Th it's it's just another adoption thing. Um, yeah, you're right. I think um, there's another interesting development with Fidelity that I included in here too. Is they're going to be offering Bitcoin and their 401k plan soon? Um, they said there's already a company doing this, and I'm assuming they meant MicroStrategy because MicroStrategy is is already said that they're going to they are allowing their employees to invest in Bitcoin in their 401ks. Do you think that's a good thing or do you think that's a bad, an irresponsible thing? Um, I mean, if people want to invest in Bitcoin, I think they should be able to. So, so it's a good a thing. It. It's more choice. Yeah. Well, um, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, I didn't include this, but I just saw it today. Um, in their Berkshire Hathaway meeting said that doing this is a scam and and um, Warren Buffett said if he could have all the Bitcoin he wouldn't pay $25 for all the Bitcoin in the world well I mean like he's an idiot yeah yeah I mean he's, he's totally wrong but I mean I, I it's, it's Bitcoin it's not like they're letting people buy a Shiba Inu or Dogecoin or something Right. And I think Fidelity is just going to slowly start offering Bitcoin, Ethereum, the top market stuff, uh, the top yeah. shelf stuff. Hopefully Solana. <laughs> that would be good for me. <laughs> but, um, but reality is, I mean, a lot of people are suggesting you do 2% into crypto. So if everybody adopted that, that would add like, you know, billions and billions of dollars. And in the price action, it would actually increase Bitcoin by quite a lot if that actually happened. So it could be a good bullish thing for Bitcoin. Um, but, yeah, that's definitely a step in the right direction. Because they have like five trillion dollars in asset management, and it would just it would it would add a lot of value to to crypto if they allowed that. So it's, that's from that perspective, it's definitely a good thing. Um, but I think it should be offered because if you could buy a penny stock in your 401k which which some my, my plan allows me to do that i should be able to buy bitcoin too yeah 
doesn't make any sense. I mean, and, and I think Bitcoin is way less risky than a penny stock. So, to me, a penny it's stock is like buying a crap crypto. It's about the same thing. Yeah, you're right. It's also I mean, good because this is making like buying cryptocurrencies even more accessible, which I think has been a problem. Yeah, I think so too. And some people only do investments in their four hundred one k. They don't even mess with anything else. That's all they do. Yeah. And really, I, I think most people, that's how they do it. Yep. Yeah, right, right, yeah. There are, or IRAs. And this would include, I th actually, I don't know if it includes IRAs, but that, that, that I'm sure that'll be next. Once they, if they can get a spot ETF made, it, it could be available for anybody with any kind of investment plan. If a spot ETF? What do you mean? Oh, um, an ETF where the money that goes into the ETF is going to directly be buying Bitcoin. So it'd be a custodial account for Bitcoin essentially. So okay. it, it would, it would correlate with the price directly. It would be literally like you're buying Bitcoin. I gotcha. Okay. But, the, but it's wrapped in a stock wrapper and an ETF wrapper. Just like when you buy like a S and P 500, you're te you're not technically buying a, a company. You're buying a, you, you are, I guess, you're buying a, a wrapping of all the, the S&P. So it would be you're buying a um, a fund that is just buying Bitcoin with the funds that they get. Right, and so it basically is a one-to-one. -one. It's basically a one-to-one. -one. I'm sure there'd be an expense for that, but it'd be so small it wouldn't really matter that much. But there'd have to be some kind of expense. It's still better to just buy Bitcoin directly, but that would be... Um, that You don't want to deal with... with like a wallet and all that you don't want to deal with the wallet you don't want to deal with the you i mean the only places you i mean you can only buy the crypto exchanges robin hood included and cash apps one two and pay you can't buy it in a lot of places now paypal but they're not as um gear well robin hood and the, the crypto exchanges are i say robin is probably the most integrated with all the different apps and cash apps probably good too but the cool thing about Robinhood is you can still do your options, your stocks, and all that stuff with it, and uh, other cryptos. But I think it would um, it would just make it more accessible to folks who aren't as comfortable with that. And also, I think it, it also would make it accessible to 401k plans and IRAs, which it is not right now. So, And yeah. this, is, this has already been pushed last year like five different times, and it's gotten denied by the SEC over and over. And because they say it's too risky or some nonsense like that. Although there's already a futures ETF on Bitcoin, which that's like futures contracts. And I'm not really sure how that works. It's not directly one-to-one -one Bitcoin thing. So it's more like a paper Bitcoin. And I'm not, that, that's not what I would want to buy. I'd want to buy actual I, Bitcoin. I'm sure that's going to change in the future. <laughs> well, like the, there's so many companies, too. there's so many companies pushing for it. That's why if you wanted exposure to Bitcoin, probably the best way to do that is micro strategy because that's literally every dollar they get, they put it into Bitcoin. So they practically are a spot ETF. Yeah. Except there's, except it's, you have to have more trust though because you have to trust the company follows that strategy. It's not like written into it, written into its law that it, what an ETF would be. It's like you have to buy the Bitcoin. It would, it's, you have to have a little more trust that the company's going to follow what they're saying. So it's sure. not quite as good, but you could argue it's better though, because they do have a cash creating company that's that's actively buying the Bitcoin. You know what I mean? So there's kind of that component too. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. You could argue it's better, but I would say it's more risky. I guess that's the difference. It's better probably because it is a company too, but it's more risky, I guess. So does this legitimize the metaverse, or will do you think it'll completely crumble in the future? I think we already discuss that i think it yeah, I cover that. yeah i mean i think it definitely is a legitimate thing but um it, it's not gonna crumble for sure at fidelity Oops. we're all about engaging in an all right so this is something i came across that i thought was interesting smart contracts and um so basically it's like an integration between crypto and the stock market. So yeah, let me kind of go into it a little bit. Um, so it, it's, there are already 
tokenized um, stocks on crypto exchanges now, but there takes some trust there because I don't think they're not actually officially, um, they're not officially like recognized or anything. Like you could buy Tesla stock on a crypto exchange, certain ones. And they're not actually officially recognized. So it's not, I wouldn't, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about um, companies and the stock market exchange, the exchanges fully um, integrating with, with crypto technology to tokenize the different stocks. So you can buy this, you can still buy from a brokerage, but you'd be able to transfer that brokerage firm, to, excuse me, your, your stocks and shares from your brokerage to a, um, to your own wallet or to any service just by um, transferring it. Um, so it, the transfer process would work the same as like Bitcoin would or Ethereum. So you, you tokenize the stock and then trade it however you trade it like a coin or whatever. Cryptocurrency. Yeah, right. And you could, you can, um, you can keep it um, in your wallet and custodial it yourself. You don't have to actually have it on an exchange at a brokerage firm and it's kind of reminds me i mean back in the day they used to issue like stock paper and you had to hold on to that paper to like actually so i think some sometimes they do that with bonds too if you lost your bonds or whatever i think it, it you had to keep a hold of that paper they put it in like safety deposit boxes so it's kind of like a return yeah. to that in a way you you can you could choose to do that i probably wouldn't do that because i'd I'd be afraid I'd lose it or something, but it's kind of an interesting idea because then I could say, Hey, Clint, do you want to trade? I'll give you a Tesla share from my wallet or whatever. And you can give me X Bitcoin for them. We can just trade. Right. Like that'd be one yeah, interesting that's, thing. Yeah. That's something we, ha you know, haven't had the ability to do, I guess, since it was physical. Right. And that wasn't a good way to do it. And, and it, it, most people didn't invest in stocks back in the day. It was not, I mean, this is to me going to totally democratize stock investing and also make it even more accessible and more like it, your stocks are commodities, which I think is yeah. a good thing. And this is, this is already kind of getting implemented to a degree in the cash app. You could buy stocks on cash app and Bitcoin. You could buy on there. So if you had a cash app, I could send you Nike stock. I could send you Tesla stock. I could just send it to you. Um, Currently? To, to, yeah. Currently. So how does that work? I say I own Tesla stock on the cash app. I don't, but I say I did. And you had the cash app. I could, instead of paying you ten, a $100 or $1,000, I could just send you a Tesla stock. Oh, so... Yeah. I've never used Cash App, so I'm assuming in Cash App you can buy stocks. You can buy stocks, and, and you can only buy Bitcoin, but you can buy Bitcoin as well. I see. Okay. You can't do options and stuff like that, so it's a kind of a limited app. But you could buy a stock and send it to somebody, which is pretty freaking cool. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, so if you didn't have the cash or something like that, and but you had some stock in something and somebody was willing to accept that, that's kind of an interesting thing. Um, but this is an extension of that. It wouldn't be custodial like that. It would be, um, I think you could actually self custody, you know, be, have your own wallet actually. And you could, I guess you could lose it theoretically if you did it that way. Although I think that, yeah. well, I think the wallet technology is getting better and it has to have a better user experience because the fact that people lose their shit all the time is not good. And that has to improve. I have a question. What if you have a stock in your, your wallet or whatever and you lose it? Um, what yeah. happens to that stock? Well, that would just help the price of the stock. If so it, it would just basically, it would basically forever be sold, right? It would forever be gone. It would just, it would just supply the stock would go down. Now it wouldn't be technically recognized. Like Bitcoin, there'll always be 21 million Bitcoin, but we've talked about this before. There's actually only going to be about 14 or 15 million Bitcoin because you right. lost a Bitcoin. Lots of people have lost it. Yeah. It'd be the same thing. Okay. It would just help the price of the stock because there'd be less supply on the market and all that. 
All right, yeah, that makes sense. Also, the wallet technology would ha- also greatly um, help with um, leaving assets to family members. Because now we had her great aunt pass away, and I was a pain in the butt trying to get the money out of there. So imagine if it was all just on this digital wallet, everything's there, and it's all. And, and even with smart tr- contract technology, you could even have it written in to execute this code to split it appropriately to the the right wallets. I'm just saying, in theory, you could do that. Yeah, I love the smart contract, you know, idea and and, and implementation of it. I think it's. I think that is the future. A smart contract. That's Ethereum. Hey, that's what it's all about. And um, yeah. Sol- Solana is too. But yeah, I think that stuff's even the technology side to that stuff is cooler. Um, Bitcoin is just a payment system and it benefits from being the first one, but it's also very important as well. But yeah, I, I think the smart contract side is, is definitely, it's like the most exciting thing, like the, the possibilities of it. Um, the only problem is, is if the government gets in the way to how cool, I mean, you could do it for literally anything, but I mean, the government would use it. Like they definitely would. Ideally. Yeah. Or they're going to want to make it, they're going to want to make it an old process and not willing to change anything. That's true. Yeah. It would, it would be slow. They would be slow to adopt it. I know they should. I think honestly, like taxes, paying taxes should be built on Ethereum somehow. Yeah, I mean, like, I think in the future, like, that will be the case. Like, the government, everyone would just have a smart contract with the government, and your taxes would be taken out, like, automatically. I mean, that would be ideal. Stuff like that could happen. But there's also a lot of companies, like H&R Block, all these companies actively um, labor, I'm not labor, uh, lobby the government to keep taxes convoluted just so they can make money from tax stuff. You said like H and R Block and people like that. Yeah, you know the companies that do taxes. Yeah, the tax places. Yeah. They want to keep it complicated. Well, yeah, I mean that's their business. So it's but it's just I don't know. So I don't know. I don't know how far it, it can literally do anything, um, and and it it basically allows you to put software and code to um, economic value of some sort and also not just that anything really because we've already said it's a way to organize people it's a way to do the DAOs, the the decentralized autonomous organizations they can literally do anything that you could think of but it's just a it's a, just of... a, di- it's a digital contract <laughs> that has like executable code essentially and if it's executable on economic stuff it's it means a lot mm-hmm. ownership of a company ownership of bitcoin ownership of um these different things so yeah and and that's why nfts right now in its current form are like the idea of it's actually really cool because an nft could represent a deed of a house nft could represent a ticket to you know go see a concert or something it's just right now i think the technology is let's make it a jpeg that's the only thing we can really do right now yeah but um yeah, smart contracts are really cool because you can think of like so many different use cases. So, anyways, yeah. this, this would tokenize everything about the stock. It could even be put in, a, like I said, self custodied. Um, yeah, I already did that. Oh, yeah, here's another idea I heard on the, the interview I watched, which was um, with 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 Anthony Pompanello. Um, it's a proof of ownership in a company, and like you could, like you know how credit cards and stuff are already being put on phones, basically. There's already yeah. these like I think Apple Wallet will will probably integrate with crypto soon, and they will do like all this stuff that I'm talking about how to make the user experience much better. People don't lose all their shit. They're gonna make it a lot better. Yeah, I have very confident that they're gonna do that. I think the Square, the Cash App will too, and Venmo and all of them will. But anyways, that's a side I point. Mean, Apple has a history of revolutionizing things, so I think they'll have a big part of it personally. There's yeah. also a lot of speculation that they're going to have Bitcoin and the Lightning Network and all that. Um, so that'd be good. Um, anyways, so like if you owned some shares of Nike, maybe Nike is cool and says you get 2% off when you shop at Nike because you have ownership of the company. And that would be easily readable from your wallet. 
and executable when you go on an online website and use your wallet to pay for it. Yeah, I think that's a cool idea. Or even if you went to a Nike store, you could just put pew, you know. And also, you could sell... What was I going to say? No. I think it worked for like Walmart too. I, it's just an idea. Like I, it's not, it's kind of a rudimentary idea, but it is, it's interesting what you could build on top of the tokenized stocks because it's just code at that point. Right. So you could do a lot of things. It, yeah. I mean, it's limitless. So that's kind of a, just a neat idea. This was another cool thing that they mentioned. Um, so instead of getting your dividends paid quarterly, they could just stream it to you always constantly streaming the, the pennies to you yeah. like it you see what i'm saying like it's just constant money increasing and you could tell it to just automatically go back into your nike stock or whatever you're talking about or you could tell it to just go straight into usd the us dollar tokenized dollar or it might be a central bank digital currency if they create that or you could tell it to put it into bitcoin automatically or something like that you could probably yeah. tell it to do any kind of asset yeah, I think that's that's a cool idea. Right, and that, that's already kind of, I mean, there's all these, I don't know if you've heard of BlockFi, but they're doing some exciting stuff with financial services around crypto. Like you can get a loan on top of your Bitcoin. Like say you own one Bitcoin, you can get like a $30,000 loan on that at 3% interest or something if you needed a short-term loan to pay for something. And they're doing it for businesses and um, individuals as well. And you can also get a credit card with them and they'll automatically pay you one and a half percent, whatever purchase you have in Bitcoin with your credit card. So, Wait, so sorry, go ahead. you can, they'll give you 30 grand and um, hey, if you, you buy own, Bitcoin. No, if you own a Bitcoin, you can use that as collateral and get a $30,000 loan on the bitcoin see. if you don't pay it back they take your bitcoin i see okay that's the collateral so they're already offering those services i think they even let you do it with ethereum and all sorts of different cryptos because they're looking at it as a digital asset that you can get a loan on just like you would a car or a house and right. i think this would also like i really hope they tokenize the stock stuff too because then it would work the same way because right now which whenever you get a loan, they do look at your stock accounts, but it's sort of like weird and not really, it's not looked at quite the same. If, if you could actually literally say, I want to put up, you know, a thousand shares of Nike for X money. It's much more in stone what you're putting up as collateral. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even know if you could do that now, but that I, I just think it's kind of cool. If they do the stocks too, you could use it as well as the crypto. The crypto is just more obvious because it's already natively built in that way. It also makes things like more liquid, I guess. Like you don't, oh, yeah. you don't really have to sell it. Now you can just trade your your stocks. Right. Yeah. You, you, yeah. If you need money, and you don't want to sell your stocks. Like what we've done. Like when I'm put a down payment on my house, I had to sell some stocks. I wouldn't necessarily have to right. do that. I could get a little loan on the stocks on the side. I, I can understand you might want to sell it because you don't want to have to worry about paying a percentage. However, you have to pay taxes on those stocks when they go up. So you might be paying the 4% anyways. And there would definitely be situations where it would make sense. Yeah, yeah. So it's a very cool idea. And they're doing this, like I said, with crypto. It's called BlockFi. It's kind of, it's supposedly growing rapidly. But um, I think there'll be a lot of financial service companies like that that take advantage of all this stuff. And it won't just be crypto. It'll be stuff like whenever they, this ever happens. With stocks it'll be even bigger than that i think because right now basically if you want to take loans out and stuff you have to do it within your brokerage account like take margin out and stuff like that it's not as easy as saying i want to take my stock from this thing put it on you know end of a wallet and then offer it up to some other random you know um uh, financial firm and say i want yeah. a ten thousand you can't do anything like that now so it's it's kind of neat. I think it's good for people who don't own a ton of assets because the, the people who are rich can already do this kind of stuff because they have, you know, the name and they can do pretty much anything they want to do. This just, I think it just opens the doors up to allow people to be more financially literate and do more interesting things that, than you can do now. Yeah. It gives 
a lot more freedom to you know, basically do whatever you want to do. Right. I, I mean, I, I think so too. I mean, I hope they don't start giving out um, crypto loans based off of your NFTs, though. <laughs> That'd be kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Elon did officially buy Twitter. Um, what did you think when that happened? Um, I thought it was amazing, and I, I was <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> I thought it was funny. He did it literally the day after we uh, were, at, you know, had our last podcast. Yep. I mean, I was surprised it actually pulled it off. I didn't think they were going to accept it. I was very well, skeptical. My understanding is like he kind of they had to because um, their earnings report was coming out and it it wasn't that that good. So if they didn't accept it, then they could be um, it could be said that they weren't being like uh, held to their fid fiduciary responsibilities to the, right. to the stakeholders and all that. Right, they were being too ideological. Yes. And not financial, which is what they're Basically, supposed to Basically, if they didn't accept it, they could have got sued. Oh, yeah, for sure. I was very bearish on it. I just, did, I just didn't think it was going to... It just sounded like craziness. I just did not believe it, you know? Yeah, but I mean, it goes to show if you got enough money, you can buy anything. <laughs> buy an entire platform i don't like yeah. how y'all do business i want to change it all i will buy it please yeah well i mean it's just been censorious for the past you know really since 2015 i guess and El looking back on it in hindsight elon's game theory was was pretty good spot on bought 10 percent of the company pumped it pretended like he wanted to be on the board i don't believe any of that now and then he's like well, i think if they he claims I that if I they would have like that's bullshit. He was playing he them the whole if time. If they would have been like receptive to him and uh -oh. you know his ideas, that he would have just done the board. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he was playing them the whole time like a fiddle. I think he brought the ten percent. He was pretending like he cared, and then he was like, "Yeah, y'all aren't doing what I say," because he knew they weren't going to do it. He knew that. He yeah. we're going to just do what he says, even if he owns 10%. That's not enough. It's not 100%. And then he's like, well, fuck it. I'm going to buy it. So that was the whole story. I think he had that plan from the get-go. And he he pumped it because he made it pump when he bought it. And that was his like thing saying, hey, look how much value I'm adding. If I sell this shit, it's going to go to, you know, 30 bucks again or 20 bucks. Yeah. So I think it was his plan, but I mean, I think he's too smart to be as um and i think he off did the cuff as the ex yep i think he knew I, exactly I, I what think, he was doing i mean but there might have been a scenario to where he like the board i think if they would have been super receptive to him i think that he might not would have just outright bought it i think it's a possibility but no you're right no. i i guess you're right <sighs> I, I guess I so I think he knew that it w they weren't going to be. But I yeah, he, I mean, the idea of them being receptive is almost impossible. So right, and I think he's smart enough to know that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Either way, it worked out for him. <laughs> um, do you think he'll actually stick to what he says, or do you think he's going to? Do you think he's going to control the whole platform or all? all they're going to follow people? in their footsteps. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, I hope he sticks to it. I mean, I, I don't I really have a reason to to think that he won't. I guess. I mean, crypto Twitter is Twitter is not a good company. I mean, it, it was not making money. He can't possibly look at it as a financial gain. I mean, he might make money on it. I don't know, but he'll he'll certainly. I mean, it's sort of like Bezos owns the Wall Street Journal. Now he owns Twitter. Twitter is vastly superior in every way. If people take it way more seriously, you can get information out instantly. Um, so he, he could just use it as a way to, to help his thing and promote himself. But I, I, I think it's, I think he's definitely sticking to what he says. Yeah, I think so too. And, and cause I, mean, what he's saying is what he believes. So, I mean, he would be going against his, uh, at least his image of what he portrays, you know? Right. Um, 
yeah, I mean, I guess what well, time will tell to see if it actually transforms. I, I mean, I've I've been enjoying Twitter. I've only started it, you know, a few months ago, and I, I've been enjoying it. And I will tell you, I have noticed my likes going up recently. I don't know if I was one of the shadow band people or not. Probably wasn't, but I have noticed that ever since well, I supposedly now, I've noticed it. But supposedly the people who were shadow band, it was a bunch of young younger people. So you I mean, you might have been one. I don't know. It's, I mean, it definitely seems like it's gone up. I don't know. Before I got like nothing, and then I got like. I think I get, they were get, trying to. I, I think they were shadow banning like younger people who were going in a more right leaning uh, view, viewpoint. I got. I, and well, yeah. It seemed like a way to. Um, I don't know. I get Free, you mean freedom them. leaning? Freedom leaning. Freedom leaning, yes, that's what I should say. It's not right leaning. It's just yeah, not necessarily about... right leaning. <laughs> if you talk about anything that you want to talk about, without because if you talk about stuff without thinking about every single person on the planet Earth, basically, yeah, which is impossible. So, um, you think he'll consider crypto to help with the bot problem, or do you think he's going to take that seriously? Hasn't he said that? I don't think he said he's going to take crypto yet, but he said he's thinking about a solution. He said something about he wants to make it to where anybody who's real will get the blue check, which the blue check right now is really rare. And all, like you see right here, Elon Musk has got it. So that means he's verified or whatever because he's a verified influencer. Like Bill Gates has it, I'm sure. And Donald Trump probably had it when he was on it. But um, people like us would never would never get it. It's a very long and strenuous process. You basically have to show that you were somebody to get it. Right. So I think um, he said that he wants to make it to where anybody can be verified that can prove they're a person is what I've heard. Yeah, yeah. So currently, like, Twitter approves of who is verified or not, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a very long process. But, but there are people who have, like, no followers who are verified. No. Not with that blue check, no. No, there are. I've seen them. With, like, really? a thousand followers. I've seen that before. It's kind of a pain in the butt to get it. They must have really cared. Because there's somebody... I know Lex Friedman, the podcaster, who has, like, a million followers. He doesn't have one. Well, I mean, I wonder the if process. they're just, like, very selective... Or... Like if it's ideologically driven, I guess it could be. Supposedly, there's like a, a really long, like six month process to do it. So, yeah. Oh, well, to, to prove that out, let's look and see if like um, Ben Shapiro is. Sure. Yeah, he's blue checked. Yeah, yeah. You just have to really care. But there are some people who are famous who aren't. Right, that's what I'm saying. Lex Friedman is. He's relatively famous. Like he's not, but he's got 1.3 million followers. He didn't go through the annoying ass process. Right. Right now, it's an annoying ass process. He didn't do it because he just didn't want to. Yeah. So, so I'm saying. Well, well, the point is, some people. There's a setting I think in Twitter to not talk to people who aren't verified or something like that or whatever. So now he's wanting to make it to where anybody who can prove they're a real person be verified. So there's not that um, gated community kind of thing to it. Let's see, well that'd be interesting. So then you'd have like t two versions of Twitter. Essentially, you'd have uh, the non-anonymous people and then anonymous people, right? Well, I don't even know if you necessarily have to be not anonymous. I think you you just have to prove that you're a person. Oh, you have to. Okay. I thought, be, okay, uh, maybe that's misunderstood, but I thought like being verified was like you, you are who you say you are. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't, well, but if you go to like, let me go back to it real quick. Like if we go to McDonald's or something, what does that say? Yeah, they're verified. Yeah, but that's because that's their like, comp like that is McDonald's and it's run by McDonald's. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let me look up. Some people have like Bitcoin in their handle, but they're not really, they're not really. Okay, okay. Here you go. Okay. Bitcoin archive. Bitcoin news. That that sounds like some, you know, that's just a news thing. That's not. Okay, 
I am, yeah. That's an idea, though. You're right. But let me let's see if I can find one that's more like... I know what you're saying. There's like a difference. Like, this is more what I was thinking about. Like, the Bitcoin arch of. He, he's not verified. Like, I couldn't make a, a, tw- a Twitter account for Donald Trump and say... And then get it verified. Right. But you might could, like, if it's... If it's like something like this, he might be able to, or whoever runs this, might be able to get it verified, possibly. Because it's, you're basically just proving you're a person, and this is the idea that you use, maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I think you should be able to, because there might just be this, I you, you might not want to be, um, the point being, you might want to represent yourself as, the, as an, an entity, or as a different Right. Um, yes, I agree. Pseudonym, yeah, it, but you're a real person doing it. Yeah, I agree. I hope that's what he means. I don't know. He might mean you have to be like one to one. This is who you are, and so on. I don't really. Well, know. maybe not because I mean I think doing it that way, you couldn't be anonymous and be verified. And I think there's there's definitely people on there now who are anonymous and are still verified, like the the um, liberal hive mind. The, yeah, or, or the, that Bitcoin news. I mean, you could be anonymous and still be verified on there. So, Yeah, I think that's... And I think the crypto wallet solves that. You have crypto value. You connect your wallet to it. You're a real person. There you go. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, did you, hey, you? I think we showed this tweet. <laughs> what do you think about this? Elon and Bill Gates. Uh, I love how they're they're fighting. I think it's funny. <laughs> He seems to hate the older people. Like he hates Bill Gates. He hates Warren Buffett. Bill Gates is is fucking duplicitous. I mean, like he was wanting to work with Elon, and he had a short position on Tesla, and so he's he was wanting to work with Elon on a uh, climate change thing, and Elon's like, "Well, do you still own the short position?" He's like, (laughs) "Yes," and he said, "Then no." Because it's hard to, it's hard to think you take you seriously. He's doing it purely from a financial perspective. You could argue Tesla is a little overvalued. His PE is quite high. You could argue that from a purely financial perspective. But if you believe in Tesla's mission, you shouldn't be shorting it. Right. It, it and you believe shows, in climate change stuff, you know. Right. It just shows it, he cares about money more. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That's true. I mean, he's definitely... Well, the fact he's so diversified now, he doesn't believe in anything, really. When you become that diversified with that many assets, it means you don't really have a mission or a goal. You just want to get the free lunch and just right. rake in all the money. Like, yeah. you're not really mission-driven, I don't feel like, at that point. Especially from... At least from an investing standpoint, you're not. I agree. Um, will tri- Trump come back, or will he focus on Truth Social? Since we're talking about Twitter, I'm just curious, and Elon. Yeah. Well, I, well, well, before I answer, I will say, after um, Twitter was bought, True Social became number one on the App Store. I did see but, that. I almost included that. I about forgot about it. Yeah. Um. So I mean, bef- before, if True Social doesn't take off at all then Trump would be dumb to stay on there. Like, he would have to go back to Twitter. If, 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 if it gets a bunch, if it gets a big following, I don't really see that happening, then he'll probably stay on there. I think he, why why not use both? Yeah, I don't, well, it's because he's invested in True Social. I mean, didn't he make it? I think it's his, his, um, some, he's got some investments in it. Yeah, he's but connected to it somehow. It's going to clearly just be right people. It's going to have no left people on it. Like, you're not going to reach anybody but your base. Right. I don't want an echo chamber. That's not what I want. No, I I, I think it's fine if he wants to use True Social, but use Twitter too. It's stupid not to. He, I think once he uses True Social and realizes he's not getting the same attention he did on Twitter, he's going to go to Twitter. I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> Once he realizes, oh wait, I, I get way more attention from Twitter than he's gonna do whatever gets him the most views. Yep, which would be both do both. That would make the most sense. Yeah, yeah. 
he should have a guy like he should choose one platform he tweets on or does we know what i mean post on and then he should have somebody who's hired who just duplicates it on everything yeah because they because then he just does one and then they'll just automatically duplicate or have like a bot do it or something i about to say i bet there's some sort of app or something where you top one message and then it posts it to like every platform you know, I think there is. I just, um, I don't know what it is. There probably yeah, is one. I, mean, I think I remember I've never had a... Tim Pool talking about that one time or something, but I don't remember. I really? I think you did. Yeah, I've never had a need to use that, so. No, no. I Definitely not me either. Alrighty. Shift topics a little bit. Um, go back to MicroStrategy again that we mentioned. Um so I've, I, I identified this as something interesting and potentially um, it's undervalued right now. So they hold like 129,000-ish Bitcoin. The total uh, market cap, oh, excuse me, this is worth approximately 5.2 billion. The market cap is only 4.4 4 billion. So if you discount the company to nothing, meaning the company is worthless, you still have a deficit of 0.8 million, the difference between the Bitcoin they own and the market cap is at 0.8 billion. It's worth noting that there is roughly 2.2 billion in debt, but in my opinion, there's a company involved too. So that should kind of about balance out. So to me, that definitely seems like it's a good time to buy it. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, it seems like on paper, they are literally worth more than that. Right, yeah, you can just literally do math. Yeah. You don't even have to like. There is no speculation at all here. This is just silly. Unless you like subtract out the debt, but I mean. But that's not how you actually. That's not how you. Yeah, actually, that's not how people do it. That's not how you do. Like I said, if you make the, but there's a company too. Right. You discount the company I mean, to nothing it, and the debt to nothing, and then you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, every company has debt, so that like it comes with it. Right. I. Um. I feel like it's a good time to buy it, especially in the absence of a Bitcoin spot ETF, like I mentioned before. Um, but, I mean, you do have to accept there's a company there and you have to trust them to keep doing their mission. But you do, by proxy, own some Bitcoin that way, and it's a way to get exposure in the stock market, so I kind of like it. Um, how do you view MicroStrategy's strategy? What do, you, what do you mean by their strategy? To make cash... And buy Bitcoin. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty good strategy. Um, I think it's, it's, I mean, it's a little risky, you know. Right, yeah, I'm not denying that. But it gives you Bitcoin exposure is my point. Yeah. If you believe in Bitcoin, it's a good play. If you don't believe in Bitcoin, if you're Warren Buffett, you think this is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, clearly he's bought into Bitcoin. Like, he believes in it. <laughs> yes. There is no other asset. There's only one yeah. asset. <laughs> I, th I thought that was hilarious. That's 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 like the fun. I think it's he he's so crazy about it. But I think it. So basically, what they do is like I said, they make whatever profit they make after expenses and everything goes into Bitcoin. And whenever they can leverage, they use leverage to buy more Bitcoin too. Yeah. So, um, it's actually, it's kind of like a Bitcoin spot ETF on steroids, really. It's like you're investing, if you, if you, it's like you're investing in a company that's obsessed with Bitcoin, which is just a strange I mean, thing. Thing is like, I mean, if Bit, if Bitcoin takes off, MicroStrategy is going to do great. <laughs> if it 10 X's, MicroStrategy 10 X's. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So. That's kind of my point, is that it, it is definitely a good compromise if you don't have a Bitcoin spot ETF. If you're willing to accept the fact there is a company behind it and there's personalities there. So slightly more risky, but um, but there's situations like this where literally you have arbitrage opportunities. To me, this is arbitrage. Yeah. Like, it's not even... Like, that's not going to happen in a spot ETF. That's not going to be there. So Right. I mean, cause really, the value is lower because people, I guess, don't... Um, it's not as... Or, or, scared the, i don't know it's the accounting is the problem they're showing losses for the year and the reason why they're showing losses is because bitcoins went down a good bit 
technically they bought their Bitcoin for cheaper. They've actually made money on it. But every time the Bitcoin that they say they purchased for fifty thousand dollars, so right then their purchase amount is fifty thousand dollars. If it ever goes below fifty thousand dollars, that's what's written down as the worth of it, and you have to count that as a loss. So if Bitcoin drops down to thirty thousand, and if even if it goes up to a million tomorrow, they have to say that they um, lost twenty thousand dollars on that particular Bitcoin because of the accounting rules and how um, Bitcoin is not considered. Uh, it's considered a, I can't remember the name of it, some kind of asset, and that's how you have to do it. Because it's it's, okay. it's almost like it's like a asset that's like a car or something. So is this like um, FEC rules? The gap, the generally accepted accounting rules that all, um, and it's, well, yeah, it is SEC rules, true. It, they have to use gap accounting, and that's how the gap accounting works for Bitcoin currently. That's why they really want to change these rules, because it makes their company not look good. That's another reason why it's undervalued. But they're actually doing better than what they're saying. Right. So, but from a gap perspective, because people still look at Bitcoin as trash, essentially. Yeah. So that's another reason why people are like, because if you, if you didn't know anything about it, you didn't know the whole Bitcoin thing, and you look at this company, you're like, this is horrible. Because the Bitcoin got so destroyed. I mean. Right. And even if it went up to a million tomorrow, you still have to count it as a twenty thousand dollar loss because at one point it was thirty thousand. I see. Makes no sense. So it do, you don't. I guess they do it that way because you you could have sold it, right? I'm assuming. No, it's not because you sold it. No, I'm saying you could have. Is that why they view it that way? No. It's because it. it it's a very conservative way to evaluate things. They're looking at the asset almost like an asset, a depreciating asset, like a car. Like if you on the gap accounting rules, you have to you have to um, like say for example, a car you buy for fifty thousand, two years later it's worth thirty thousand. You have to then report that as a thirty thousand dollar asset, depreciating over time. But I mean, that's just not how it behaves. <laughs> I know the gap accounting rules haven't called up yet. That's my point. Yeah. And that's where you classify it for some reason because yeah. they haven't fully fleshed it out yet. It's really a, it's a totally different thing and they're not calculating it correctly. So that's another reason why people are, if you didn't know anything about the Bitcoin strategy, you would think this company is doing horrible because you wouldn't have a clue. But if you read into it and actually understand it, you realize they're not doing badly. They're actually profitable. Their core company is profitable. But because of the Bitcoin thing, it's making them look not profitable. Right. So. That's a good arbitrage um, opportunity. Um, some new countries have adopted Bitcoin, which is interesting. Not that they they have like a huge GDP. They, they, they're not worth a ton. It's not going to affect the price in any real way, really. But it's kind of cool. You know, El Salvador did it last year. And now we have the Central African Republic and Cuba have, have, I don't know if Cuba has adopted as legal tender yet, but their central bank is buying it or something like that. But the central African Republic is accepting it as legal tender. I don't know how many people actually own it there. And I don't know if they're going to try to integrate it into their society like El Salvador is doing. So I'm not sure El Salvador has created like an app and are pushing people to use it and like giving incentives to use Bitcoin to use it and, um, or, Basically, they bought, they bought Bitcoin, and um, you can use this app to use the Bitcoin, and it's, it's integrated with their society really well. and Or they're trying to do that, I should say. I don't know how well it's working right now, but that's the point of it. And the Central African Republic, I'm not sure if they have plans to do that, but they are accepting it as legal tender, and I'm not sure how much they actually own of it. But I did think it continues to push the, nev the narrative, at least, that Bitcoin is creating a new standard alongside the U.S. dollar standard. So it's probably like good news overall for Bitcoin legitimacy, I think. Probably not like so, the be best news in the world, but it's, it's, it's good news, I would say. So the, the Central African Republic and Cuba, th this isn't like their national currency, right? The just, Central African Republic it. is basically adopting it as their national currency, essentially. Like, it'll be like you know, alongside of their normal currency. So it's going to be like if you could pay your taxes in Bitcoin. I see. Okay. Like, you can do the same thing in El Salvador now. El Salvador still will accept a dollar. It's not like saying you can't use dollar, dollars, but it's saying 
it is an, it is an accepted currency. Like you can't go to the U.S. government and pay in Canadian dollars or Bitcoin right now. You got to pay in U.S. dollars. I see. So and, it's, it's like if you view if you view the government as like a company, it's like them accepting a new uh, form of payment. Right, and but but El Salvador, for example, is really pushing Bitcoin and pushing people to use it as a savings account. Essentially, right. they're pushing adoption of it. I don't know how hard this this the Central African Republic is or Cuba is, but I I think it's still a, a good news. I think I think. Th- the Central African Republicans Republic's currency is kind of trash, so I th- I think they're thinking if they can get this adopted, I, this will help people, and it also should help them too if they actually will put every dollar that you know just everything they can put into it would be probably a good thing considering they're they're kind of a destitute country, you know. Yeah, I mean any country that has just awful currency, like adopting Bitcoin, just makes sense. It, it right. would only be beneficial. Every time I put a dollar in Bitcoin, that benefits them. Every time an institution in the United States puts a Bitcoin puts money into Bitcoin, that benefits everybody who uses it in Africa and El Salvador. Right. I mean, Whereas that's before you're, you're in a closed system in your country, and now you're up in, in a, using a global currency. That's why. That's why if you're if you're a, a kind of a crappy country and I shouldn't say crappy, but you know what I mean? Like not doing that well. Economically. Yeah. You should be, you should have already adopted the dollar by now, the U S dollar. Cause yeah. then you, you still have those benefits too. Cause the U S dollar is so global, but Bitcoin, I think is just like the U S dollar at this point on steroids. Yeah. It's just far superior. At, at least in my view than the dollar is and um but i think that'll prove out over time even more so and if you if, if you're like el salvador and you've already bought i think they bought like 80 million or 100 dollars worth 100 million dollars worth and it does go to some crazy number el salvador is gonna be like a, doing well with their investment yeah and that'll help their country out so I, I think it's a really good it's a good thing for at least in my opinion to, for uh, countries that aren't doing so well to put some of at least some of their treasuries into into Bitcoin because it could um, you know go up and, and really help um, help them long term I just thought it was kind of interesting it didn't do anything like the price action it didn't do anything I think it's actually gone down but we're in a bear market now so I don't think somebody was saying since we're in a bear market good news does nothing bad news is terrible and in a bull market, it's the opposite. Good news does a lot, and bad news does nothing. <laughs> right, yeah. Because, I mean, now it's like anything. It's just, the it's a big-time bear market right now, for sure. I don't know how long it's going to last for, but we'll see. And people are just uneasy right now. Right, and the one thing that's doing well is the U.S. dollar. So that, to me, tells me everybody's just saving cash, and they're just afraid of everything. Yeah. Which that makes sense. Can't really blame them. No, it yeah, is a, it is a tumultuous time for sure. But at some point, like you, would you just save cash and not do anything with it. I mean, I don't even get that. Yeah, I mean, it's only gonna lose its value. Yeah, I think it's kind of silly. But uh, did you have anything else you want to talk about? That, that was all I had. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, it's about all I got. All right, that's all we got this week. Um, Thanks for joining us. If you watched all the way through, we appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And listen to us next week. Thank you. Yep, bye-bye.